The next step is to look at the audio devices settings of Logic Pro. To do that we need to go up to the menu Logic Pro, go into settings and press audio. And that will open the audio devices tab in Logic Pro. There is also a shortcut to open this menu, press command and comma. Let's look at the most important settings here for the audio device settings. First out we have a core audio, which is a low level API in macOS for handling audio. After core audio we have the inputs and outputs, the I.O. of your computer. The output is uh, where the audio exits from your computer and uh, the input is uh, where the audio enters into your computer. If you got a basic Mac without an external audio interface, uh, Logic Pro will select the built-in audio interface. And on my M1 Max uh, MacBook Pro, that would read the output device, the MacBook Pro speakers, and the input device would be the MacBook Pro microphone. Logic actually works just fine with the built-in audio interface, but using a dedicated audio interface will probably give you better audio converters and uh, ultimately a higher quality audio. And you will probably also have more available input and output ports. In my studio with the M1 Max MacBook Pro, I'm using a Centur audio interface from Antelope Audio. It has uh, really nice audio converters and uh, plenty of input and output ports. A few other popular alternatives is the Universal Audio Apollo Twin, Focusrite Scarlett, Steinberg UR22 or uh, the complete audio interface. So if you do have an external audio interface, I do recommend that you connect that to your computer and select that audio interface for the inputs and output ports of Logic Pro. In my setup that would be the Centur SC for the output and the input device. Pay attention that you can use different input and output devices. So we could use uh, the headphone outputs from the MacBook Pro as an alternative output and then use the input from the Centur audio interface. Buffer size and latency. Let's talk about latency or round trip latency. Latency is the time it takes for the audio to go into your audio interface through the digital audio converters, through the processing of your DAW, your music application, and through the output of your audio interface back to the analog realm. And on the other hand, your output latency is the time it takes for the audio to exit your music application and go back to the analog realm for listening through the speakers. So the round trip latency will basically always be a little bit higher than the output latency. If you hover above the resulting latency, you also get more detailed information on the calculation if, you're, if you want more details. If you want to record your voice or an instrument into Logic Pro in real time, you want to go as low as possible with the latency. And lowering the I.O. buffer size will result in a lower round trip latency. But keep in mind that the lower you go on the I.O. buffer size, the harder you will tax your computer and uh, on older Macs this may result in stuttering. A good middle ground is to select maybe 64 or 128 samples. And in my case that will result in 7.1 milliseconds round trip latency. If you have an Apple Silicon based Mac like the M1s or the M2s, it's uh, recommended to set the highest uh, performance cores in the processing threads. Finally, you can leave the last options to the default values. Great, now let's uh, finally press apply to confirm these settings and uh, now we're ready to take a look at the user interface of Logic.